Like a lot of people lately, I've really gotten interested in the van life and bus life movements. We've already spent a lot of time on the road and I do have some build videos in the works. What I want to talk about today though involves one of the biggest van life questions, how to make a living while on the road. I recently met Kenny, the owner of Load Up Transportation. Kenny's building out a new ProMaster with the living area. Even though he's approaching this from a business perspective, it would be just as practical for van life as a freelance income source. So here's my interview with Kenny on trucking and building out his van. Be sure to check out his channel, Load Up Transportation, link below. Hi, this is Scott. Welcome to the channel and welcome to my first interview. I've got a special guest here. This is Kenny with Load Up Trucking. Uh, Kenny, thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Scott, for having me. Now, I got to tell you, Scott, this is weird because I'm normally the person that does the interviewing. So right. me being interviewed, it's a little weird, mm -hmm. a little different, but I'm excited. Glad to be here. I understand. And I appreciate you uh, bearing with me through this. Yep. Now, I recently met Kenny and learned that he's getting into trucking. I'm sorry, getting into van life through trucking, which is uh, kind of backwards from what we usually talk about on my channel and what I'm going towards which is figuring out how to make money while you're doing van life. And I think van life is for Kenny is going to be uh, just a part of the business. Uh, having somewhere to sleep. Uh, am I thinking about this in the right way? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, van life is, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this is typically someone that's looking to live out of the van, maybe camping and seeing the world and or seeing the country. And for me, it's more of a business. And so when you think of trucking, most of us think of tractor trailer, 18 wheelers, but there's so many mm -hmm. different types of equipment that you can do trucking in, whether it's an 18 wheeler, whether it's in a box truck, or in my case, a cargo van. And we do what they call expediting. Expediting is pretty much, <clears throat> excuse me, is what it is, what it's saying that you got to get something to where it needs to go quickly. Uh, right. And a cargo van, obviously, we're not hauling as much freight as a 18 wheeler would. Uh, it's something similar, maybe something very small. And let's just say, Scott, you you call me and says, hey, I need to get, I don't know, a box of candy from the East Coast to the West Coast. How much would you charge? And we come up with a rate, and then I would bring that freight to you, and we get okay. paid for it. So, no. oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I know we're going to talk about, I'd like to talk about the specifics of what you're trying to do with your van. Um but um, first, guy, if we could get a little background, can you tell me uh, a little bit about how you got into trucking, how long you've been doing this, and a little of your background in that? So my background consists of a lot. I think I'm a jack of all trades. But uh, primary, I've been in broadcast communication for over three decades. Uh, in between uh, radio jobs, I was always intrigued with trucking. So when I wasn't doing working for a radio station, I was driving a truck. You know, we always make the joke, if you have a commercial driver's license, you'll always have a job. And so when I wasn't doing radio, I'd be in a truck. And the more I did it off and on, the more I became intrigued with it and started doing a lot of research. And, and, uh, and you know, and I started driving trucks again. And I decided one day when I stopped doing radio, I want to work for myself. And I would buy a truck and that's how I would make a living. And so... I've been doing trucking off and on since 2007. Oh, wow. Okay. And is that mostly large trucks, semi? Is that what you've been doing? Great question. Um, yes. When I started off, uh, you got a, a CDL, commercial driver's license. And when you, for those who don't know, you, you've got a class A and you've got a class B. And of course, the class C is just regular driver's license for a car. But a class A is a license that you would need to drive an 18 wheeler. Class B is primary for buses, whether it's a school bus, whether it's a city bus, or whether you're driving a commercial Greyhound bus. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I actually started off with the class B and was driving the city bus for a while. Okay. And then I decided to go to a class A. So I had to go to a trucking school. When I got my class B, the city took me through their school to get a class B to drive their, their buses. Uh, and so I went to a truck driving school when I had to drive an 18 wheeler and I got a class A. 
I didn't do anything with it because I, I took a vacation from my job just to go get the class A. <laughs> okay. And so later on, I went back and, and drove trucks for a little while. Okay. All right. And what you're getting in, in now is uh, expediting, uh, which is, I imagine, completely different. Uh, I don't know again. I know very little about trucking. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, you're okay. Trucking is really not that complex. It is basically, you know, my wife used to ask me, well, what do you do every day? It's just moving a piece of freight from point A to point B. Freight can be anything. It can be bottle water. It could be a car part. It can be paper tie. It could be anything. So trucking is just basically moving something from point A to point B, and you get paid to do it. Um, and that's pretty much trucking. The big trucks is going to move a, a lot more freight. You've got reefer, which means it may be food. Uh, you've got, you know, uh, liquid could be fuel. It could be water. It could be, uh, you've, you've seen those wide loads truck for they be moving a home. So it's just really, uh, moving something from point A to point B. And really that is trucking. You have different type of equipment that you can do it in, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's just, uh, moving something from point A to point B, uh, and they need it in a specific time frame. Okay. All right. Now, uh, a lot of my audience may be uh, curious about, like say, more making money while you're on the road. They want to get out. They want to see the country, uh, have the freedom. Um, but uh, as far as what a day in the life of a trucker is actually like, uh, if you could shed a little light, um, uh, yeah, just give people a feel for what uh, uh, what is what the life is like day to day. A lot of driving, Scott. I mean, yes. your, your job is driving. I mean, you know, people, when they ask about getting into the business, mm -hmm. I always say in any business, especially if you're working for yourself, you need to love what you do. So if you're someone who likes to drive, and I'm not talking about across town, mm -hmm. you got to drive across country. So if you love to drive, that's perfect. That's, that's the main thing. You're driving every single day uh, in hot, cold, snow, rain, sleet, wind, it, yeah. it's driving. So day in the life of trucking is I get a call from a, you know, dispatcher or a broker uh, and they will say, Hey, Scott, I've got um, some tires that I need to get from uh, Texas to North Carolina. Uh, today's Monday. I need it there by Tuesday morning. And here's what I'm going to pay. And if you say yes, then they will send you some information on where to go pick it up. When you get there, you'll go in and say, hey, I'm Joe Blow here to pick up, blah, blah, blah. They'll tell you what door to take your truck to. And then they'll load you up. You'll sign it saying you got it. And now you're off to the races to take it to the destination. You drop it off. You get signatures. You know, Nowadays, you take your cell phone. You upload that back to the person, you know, whether it's the dispatcher or the broker. And then they pay you. That is literally what you do. Um, most of the time it goes good, but again, mm -hmm. it's trucking. Anything can happen. Now, right. the other part that some people have a problem with in terms of trucking is the lifestyle. The lifestyle of trucking is, in most cases, if you OTR, that stands for over the road, mm -hmm. you're not sleeping in your king-size bed every day. You're sleeping in your truck. And you're doing that at a flying J, or, you know, uh, a TNA, a truck stop pilot, and you're in the parking lot and you're sleeping, right? That's where you sleep. You say, well, where do you get up and go to the bathroom? Well, you get up and you walk into the truck stop. You know, where do you take a shower? Well, you, you the truck stop, they have a shower. And, you know, where do you eat? Well, you gotta, you can, you know, you, you can't, you know, you, you gotta stop and get food. If you eat out every day, you're gonna spend a lot of money. So you, you got to have your van outfitted for that. So the lifestyle is living on the road. So it's similar to those who may be camping, uh, mm -hmm. but the difference is they're at a campground and it's a lot nicer right. than a truck stop. Right. Okay. Got you. And that kind of brings me to another question. And uh, as a businessman, you probably don't, don't like to hear this, but say you were uh, wanting to, uh, you know, drive for a while and stop for a while, you know, enjoy the scenery, go camp for a while, uh, wait a while for another pickup. Um, is there a problem with that? Is uh, our dispatchers not going to call you if you're not available all the time? Or uh, is there is it bad for business to do it that way? Scott, that's a great question. So it all depends on how you are running. What do I mean by that? 
if you are a owner operator, meaning you own the truck, you operate the truck, you work mm-hmm. for yourself. So you work when you want to work. However, if you are under a load, meaning Scott, you called me and said, Hey, again, I need to get these tires from Texas to North Carolina. It's Monday. I need it there by Tuesday. Now I accept it. I pick it up. I'm under a load. So I got to get that, that to you when we agreed to get it there. After I deliver that load, I can go out of service and not answer the phone if I'm an owner operator. Uh, okay. And I got to go back because there's a, there's, there's a couple of ways you can be what they call the company driver. So if you see these trucks, on the road, these 18 wheelers with the big company name on the side of it, you are an employee. So they will dispatch you. We call it force dispatching, meaning they call you, you've got to run. Now, an 18 wheeler, you regulate it. And that means you can only work 14 hours a day. You can only legally drive 11 hours a day. But if you, and, and so people say, well, I'm confused. You work and you drive. So you have what they call an ELD, that's an electronic logging device. And once you log on, your clock start. That 14-hour clock starts. Okay. And what happens within that 14-hour clock? Well, the first 15 minutes, you're going out and inspecting your vehicle to make sure it's road ready. Uh, and then you're going to start driving. And mm-hmm. once you get to the shipper, they may take three, four hours to even get your truck loaded. Uh, unless it's a drop and hook. That means you just, you're just bobtailing and you go and hook up to a trailer. Or if you already got a trailer, you're going to go and they're going to load your trailer up. Well, let's say you took you four hours. Well, you can't even drive 11 hours anymore because you're 14. You got a total of 14. So if you took four hours getting loaded, what do you got? 10 hours left? Hmm. So that's kind of, you know, once your clock starts, you're only allowed to work 14 hours. Uh, Now, if you are doing what I'm doing, in a cargo van, it's under 10,000 pounds, so it's not regulated. As a matter okay. of fact, you don't even have to have a commercial driver's license. You're a regular class C. Okay. So you can drive 18 hours. I wouldn't recommend that, but you're not regulated. Uh, you can work as long as you need to, you know, within reason. So it's a little bit different, and a lot of people are, are transitioning to cargo vans for that very reason. And uh, it's a lot cheaper. So to answer to your question, it just depends. When you're under a load, you've got to you got to get it there when it's supposed to be there. Okay. All right. Got gotcha. you. Yes. And that um uh, again, uh, like I say, my audience is a lot of people trying to figure out how to make money while they're uh, trying to get out and, and enjoy the road. Uh, so uh, it sounds like the it sounds like what you're doing is more more choice for them. But um again, if you're if you're looking to make a living and and um actually make money and be su- successful for it. It's not really, not really the plan. I wouldn't imagine. Well, you know, when you start talking about the money part, it could be very complicated. I mean, because it's not your typical nine to five where you got a set hour, you've got a set salary or a set hourly rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, trucking a lot of time, maybe it's by what they called RPM rate per mile. So we'll use a dollar a mile for an example. And you're going a thousand miles. That's a thousand bucks. And you say, well, man, that's pretty good for a day's work, right? Well, yes and no. Uh, Number one, can you do that in a day or will it take you two days? Uh, The other point is, is how much fuel are you going to use? How much is that fuel? Well, depending on where you are, fuel, if you're lucky, just $5 a gallon. And we're talking diesel. So it's probably more than that, six or seven dollars now, depending on when people are watching this video. So right. you've got to know what it costs you to run that truck. So if you're going a thousand miles, it's probably going to cost you four hundred bucks, maybe. So okay. you're you're looking at six hundred bucks now, and a thousand miles more than likely. If you're an eighteen wheeler, you're probably not going to be able to do that. And, and being and what's the word I'm looking for? and be in compliance with your the hours that, that you're allowed to work right so it's gonna take two days okay. and 600 bucks 500 bucks for two days work you know you have to decide okay is, is that enough money and it just depends you may get someone to come and say we're going to give you three dollars a mile mm-hmm. so to go from east coast to west coast and uh let me just say this there's a lot of money that can be made in trucking uh but you may make the best money you've ever made in one week. The next week, you may not make any money. 
So I always used, used to say that money doesn't come with instructions. So if you have a great week, you may mm -hmm. want to hold some of that because next week may right. not be so great. Uh, but I started doing it, Scott, because I wanted to, to work for myself. And right. you brought this up earlier on um, when you were talking about what made you want to do it. And that, that was the flexibility of wanting to, you know, to have more flexibility with my, my, my schedule when I want to work or when I didn't want to work. It's kind of like driving for Uber, if you will. You, you just turn it on and take rides when you want to and turn it off when you don't want. So you work when you want to work. Obviously, there's pros and cons to that. If you don't work, you're not making any money. But right. anybody thinking about getting into trucking, the first thing I would do if, if you have a spouse is have a sit down conversation, because if you're over the road, you're going to be gone two, three weeks at a time, especially if you're driving for a company. That's going to be a requirement that you stay out at least three weeks. And then for every week that you're out, they'll give you a day of home time. If you own an operator, you can come and go as you want. But uh, you're certainly going to be away from home um, every day. So. <clears throat> You know, you want to talk to the to the missus or the husband about that uh, and, and make sure and make sure that you're OK with the lifestyle being over the road and living out of your truck, uh, sleeping at a truck stop. And and some people may be saying, well, man, he makes it sound so horrible. I love it. But what works for me may not work for the next person. And so um, I remember a, a relative of mine says, how can I find out if trucking is for me? And I said, well, wake up about seven o'clock at night. And I want you to get on the road and drive east, south, northwest, don't matter, for about 12 hours or 11 hours straight. Only stop for fuel in the restroom and keep going. When you get there, pull into a truck stop or a rest stop, get in the back of your vehicle and go to sleep, wake mm -hmm. up, go in a public restroom, use the restroom, take a shower, and then get in the car, turn around and come back. You drove all night. It's pitch dark. If mm -hmm. you can do that, trucking may be for you if if yeah. if you know you one of those that need to be home every night you want to sleep in your bed and be able to watch the game mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> it may not work for you maybe not and it's funny you say that because a lot of people uh that get into van life uh, from what i've seen uh it sounds like that experience is a lot more uh a lot more uh true than what they what they imagine to begin with uh you know you end up sleeping at a cracker barrel or a walmart parking lot uh something like that but still i think the freedom just to be out on the road do what you want yeah. to do just sounds uh sounds like a just so the, much the, of a plus. the freedom scott is the best part i mean if i'm in a camping ground with my cargo van i can break out the barbecue pit i can break out my drones and be flying my drone i sometimes i can go fishing um uh, Depending on where I am, I'm seeing the world. If I'm in Florida, I can say I'm not going to work the next day. I'm going to be hanging out on the beach. So there's a lot of pros to it as well. Uh, and like I said, you can make good money at it. You just have to be, when you get my age, uh, sleeping is overrated. I can sleep anywhere. You know, once I'm, if there's a pillow, I'm going to sleep. And, <laughs> right. and it's, yeah. And so it, it, it's, I enjoy it. But, uh, and again, I'm working for myself. Uh, now, there's no benefits when you're working for yourself in terms of you got to get your own medical insurance. You've got to, you know, set up your own uh, retirement and all of those things. But again, in my opinion, is nothing like working for yourself. Now, if you love what it is that you do, if it's a regular nine to five, there is totally nothing wrong with that. I always say if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life if you love what you do. However, the flip side of that is if you own a job, you make good money, but you hate it. So, right. You have to kind of, you know, uh, and, and sometimes and I'm getting on pace here when you working a nine to five that you don't like and you make good money, it actually cripples you because you're there because of the good money. Now, we have responsibilities, too. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're not happy with what you're doing and not saying trucking is for you, but if mm -hmm. you've always had thoughts about starting your own business. You know, do it. <laughs> right. Do it. Right. I can see that. I've been uh, in the same same job for a lot of years. And, you know, you do get complacent. You get, you know, it's just the thing that you do. And uh, you kind of get boxed in. So I see exactly what you're saying. If if but, you love what you do, keep doing it. But if you don't, yes. try to find something, do, do something else. <laughs> All right. Well, now, I did want to get back to one thing. One more thing before I let you go. I, I kind of kind of touched on it earlier. Could you tell us a little more about the van that you just bought and what you plan to do with it? Absolutely. So I bought me a, um, well, let me back up and tell you what I was looking at 
and then what I ended up buying. So I wanted to get a Sprinter van. And people, when they hear Sprinter van, they think just a van in general. But there's actually a Sprinter van. It's by Mercedes. So we just gave them a plug. So a Mercedes Sprinter. Um, I wanted to get the biggest, the longest, the tallest, because for obvious reasons, you can haul more freight. But they wanted so much money, and everything now is higher than what you would pay for two, three years ago. So, Mm -hmm. and not to mention an oil change on a Mercedes is about 400 bucks. And so I said, well, you know, and it was, it took me a while. You you would have to order it and wait several months to get it if -hmm. you wanted to buy new. And so then I started looking at the Ford Transit, which is a really nice vehicle. They're very comfortable to drive. I mean, anybody can work on them. I mean, they, they're really nice. And so they wanted, I think, $75,000. And I had never heard of a cargo van for Mm -hmm. $75,000. Two years ago, that van was $40,000. Right. (laughs) And so, you know, I obviously decided not to do that. I said, I'm not going to spend that kind of money unless it has a waterbed, a sink, a 60 inch TV in it and all that stuff. So, so that didn't work. So I went to look for a, um, a, a pro master mm-hmm. and it was kind of like the same scenario, but cheaper. They didn't have it. They, they were having one built and they didn't know when it was going to come in. So they actually said, we can get you a 2022 Ram 3500 um, pro master. It's 159 wheelbase extended high roof. Uh, payload capacity, I think it's about 4,600 pounds, which is really good. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, how much is it going to cost me? Well, it was only 46,000 bucks. I don't mind sharing that. So when I compare the Mercedes, that was 80 something thousand. Right. For Transit was 75,000. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a pretty easy decision to make. So mm-hmm. they had uh, the one that we're getting, is, it was a black one, which is what I ended up buying. And I, really had some hesitation on that because black and, and and it's really hot and I'm in Texas. So, but I ended up buying it. It is a really nice van, but when I bought it, I knew in order for me to go to work in it, it needed some customizations. Uh, number one, I'm sleeping in, need a bed. Uh, number two, need air conditioner. I can't, I don't want to idle the van all day. And so I need a rooftop air conditioner. And I didn't know anything, Scott, about this. Uh, mm-hmm. When I, like I said, I used to be in, 18 wheelers and you would idle those all night well cargo van is a little bit different so i'm saying well can't be that big of a deal to get an air conditioner well no yes and no get an air conditioner is not an issue but you need a generator to make it work and you can't put the generator on inside of your van (laughs) yes obvious reasons so i ended up figuring that part out and then i had to have it insulated so that the air conditioner would keep it cool I had to put E-tracks on it to lock the freight down on it. As I mentioned, the bed, uh, toolbox area, I had to get a lot of stuff done. So you end up spending a lot of money just to get the van road ready, if you will. Um, the bulkhead, you know, I think in most states now, when you're ha- having a hauling freight, they want you to have a bulkhead separating you from the freight uh, in the driving area. So it has been a process, but. I've been researching it for a couple of years and I've been preparing for a couple of years to do it. And so, yeah, that's kind of where I am with it. And uh, super excited about the van, by the way. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I'd love to be able to take a look at it sometime or get some pictures. If I do, I'll definitely post them up. Absolutely. I'll send them to you. <laughs> okay, great. Well, Kenny, I really appreciate you hanging out with us today and telling us about trucking. And like I said, something I have no idea about, but I know a lot of people on the channel, a lot of people that are, looking at getting into van life is going, are going to be interested in this as a, as a living. So thank you so much for all the information. You're absolutely welcome. Don't forget if you guys have any questions, box truck, Kenny at gmail.com. If you have any questions, box truck, Kenny, and I'll also link your, your YouTube account and yeah. load it's up, under, uh, load up transportation on YouTube. Lo- oh, I'm sorry. Load no, up transportation. Yeah, okay. I'll load link up that transportation. Below. I'll definitely link that below. And thank you again so much for your time. I really enjoyed it. Scott, thanks for having me on. I'm sorry I rambled so much, but us radio people, we talk all day. (laughs) That's great. Thank you for taking the time to have me on. I appreciate it. Oh, enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Hope to do it again. And thank you, everybody, for for watching uh, all the way through this video. I know it ran a little bit long, but we got some great, great information from Kenny. 
And uh, be sure to like and subscribe below. And we'll see you on the next video.